Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting Case 73 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating inadvertent subintimal stented and its consequences. The patient presented with the right coronary artery CTO. The occlusion was with a well-defined proximal cap. There was severe calcification in the body of the occlusion and the distal vessel was of good caliber and there were some septal collaterals from the left anterior descending artery. We did several undergrade crossing attempts, however the wire appeared to go into the subintimal space. We attempted to advance the microcatheter and a small balloon past the proximal cap, however we were unable to do so. And this is an example of a balloon and crossable CTO for which there are algorithms on how to approach it. It usually starts with a small balloon threader or a grenadoplasty, goes on to using different microcatheters and various guide support techniques, goes on to laser and if possible to exchange for a rotafloppy wire rotational atherectomy, and then if everything else fails, one can do subintimal techniques to compress the plaque from the outside. In this particular case, we tried a tornus catheter that did not cross. We did change to an 8 friends amplage wide guide catheter that also did not allow the balloon to cross and did grenadoplasty, inflating and breaking the balloon in the proximal vessel without success. We finally did laser and after doing laser, we were able to advance the microcatheter all the way to the distal right coronary artery. We then attempted to re-enter into the distal true vessel. However, inadvertently, during um, crossing attempts, there was an injection from the undergrade kite catheter. And this is why it is important when undergrade dissection re entry strategies are done to disconnect the undergrade manifold so there is no such complication of injecting inadvertently into the undergrade kite catheter. After manipulation of the wire, we were under the impression that the wire was in the distal true lumen and therefore we proceeded with stent implantation. However, we clearly were not in the true lumen. And after stents, the patient developed chest discomfort as the segment elevation. And we can see on angiogram that the outflow of every major branch, posterolateral PDA and PLV, was essentially cut out. This is a challenging situation and there are many potential ways to deal with this. One is to go retrograde, however, there was no retrograde access to all those branches. What we ended up doing in this case is take a stiff polymer jacketed wire, a Pilot 200, advance it in all the three branches and perform balloon angioplasty. And after doing that, we were fortunately able to restore undergrade flow in all three branches, although there was still dissection in several planes, including a large dissection flap in the distal right coronary artery, which was treated with placement of another drug eluting stand. After doing that, we did restore TME3 flow in all the branches. The patient's chest discomfort resolved and the AKG changes resolved as well. However, the patient did have a periprocedural myocardial infarction with an increase in the CKMB. So in summary, the key point is that stenting should not be done unless we are 100% sure that the distal wire is into the distal true lumen. This can be confirmed by contralateral injection most commonly or by seeing that the wire selects the various side branches, although that's not 100% proof. Intravascular ultrasound can help and sometimes even injecting through the microcatheter can help, although the latter is not a maneuver that is recommended because if one is in the subintimal space, injecting is going to create a large hematoma and hinder subsequent re-entry attempts. If inadvertently there are stent placements in the subintimal space without outflow, then one way to approach it, as was done in this case, is to try to debranch all the occlusion, advance a polymer wire into all the major branches, and perform balloon angioplasty to restore the flow.